Where are you going? Oh, uh, I've got to run over to True Value. Now? I won't be gone long. Why is it when my parents decide to visit, you get the sudden urge to go buy tools? I don't know. They bring out the mechanic in me. Yeah, right. They bring out the chicken in you. Now take off your coat and help me clean up, please. But this place looks fine. It's filthy. Where? <laughs> I don't know, but my mother will find it. <clears throat> this is why I go to True Value. What? So you don't have to stay in clean? No, so I don't have to fight with you. Here, put this Bible away and just help me. Cheryl. What? Hiding this will not do any good. It might. It won't. Look, if we put the Bible away, if we forget about eating and saying grace, if we move to another country, if we avoid the topic of religion altogether, a minor miracle, then we'll have a nice evening. Uh-huh. Frank, would you please slow down? I'm only going 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. <sighs> well, I'd like to live one more day to see our daughter before I die. Frank, watch out for that! I saw it, Helen. I'm not blind. <sighs> We're not going to die yet, Helen. Although that might be a better solution. Frank! What? Are you really anxious for this dinner tonight? We are not going there to fight. Well, I'm not going to just sit idly by and allow them to say Yes, you are. We are going there to talk about the weather. We're going to talk about their small apartment. Hopefully she's cleaned it. We're going to talk about anything, anything but religion. We're going to have a nice evening, Frank. Uh-huh. It's going to be a terrible evening. Honey, just try and relax. Relax? But I've committed the unpardonable sin. That's not true. It is. I left the church. You haven't left the church. You chose a different denomination. Brian, according to my parents, there's only one true way to live. They blame me, you know. No, they don't. I blame him, you know. <laughs> we really don't know that it was him. Who else would put such crazy ideas in her mind? You don't just leave the church for no reason. I, I, I just don't understand it. Well, she seems, well, they both seem so devoted to this other church. But our church has hundreds of years of history behind it. You just don't leave the church for no reason. Oh, Frank, you know our Cheryl, though. She's always curious. She's always tried new things and, and asked questions. It's one thing to ask questions. It's quite another to question your faith. I was never allowed to ask questions. I believed what I was told. But it wasn't enough. If I hadn't left the church, I may never have understood salvation. They don't even believe we're Christians anymore. I devoted my entire life to this church. I've tried to do the right things. And now she thinks I'm going to hell. How could she possibly believe that? We're going to hell, you know. <laughs> They're just upset because things aren't the way they were. The things that used to keep us together now are pulling us apart. Keep us together? We were close, but now... I remember holding Cheryl on her baptism day. She was so beautiful in that little white gown. That day was special to her. It was special to all of us. I miss going to worship together as a family. I miss taking communion together. We're... We're just not a family anymore. Brian, I love my mom and dad. Like I said, we were always so close. But now... We could try talking to them again. We just end up fighting. Maybe we could just talk to her. No, we just end up yelling. 
They're here. We're here. Okay, honey, remember. We're going to talk about the weather. We're going to talk about anything. Anything but, but religion. religion. How powerful. Great job. All right, some people said they were soccer players in here. I need four up here with me. Let's see. Okay, one, two, three, four. Come on up. So four, four players. Hey, Eli, you too. All right, perfect. Come on up. Oh, and you too. Yeah, you, you raised your hand. Okay, so who, who plays defense here? Okay, defender. Any of you guys? One, one other. Any one other defender? Eli, come on. You're right here by me. Okay. Go to Eli. So you're on my right side. You're on my left side over here. Yep, so we're playing defense. And you're the forward over here, okay? So you got the ball up there. And now you're on his team, okay? Right? And so for those of you who are soccer players here, so the three of us are on defense. Other teams got the ball. We're kind of up maybe close to, let's come on up to the half field line, kind of up here. And there's no one behind us except for the goalie. And it's time for the possible breakaway, Right? Right? So as you're coming on up, Mr. Wiseman, come on up. He's coming. You're looking to make a pass, and he's looking to go right past us. And you can take a step up. I know we have this uh, step there just for a reason because I didn't want it to be kicked up too high. So if, if, Owen, you still got the ball, before you pass it, you come on up. We've got a choice. We, as he goes running, we can either chase him or we can do what? We can do an offsides trap, can't we? Anybody know what I'm talking about? If he goes behind us, come over here, and you pass it to him now, he's offsides. So we need to be on the same page. We need to be communicating, and then we don't have to go running and chasing. So when I learned this strategy in soccer, this is all we did, <laughs> the offsides trap. I'd rather do the offsides trap than go running and chasing. Okay, I'll take the ball back. You guys can go back to your seats. Let's give him a hand. Good job, folks. You know, there's some, uh, some pastors who get really upset about sports and the fact that, you know, they can conflict on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, and I get that. I totally get that. Um, but on the other hand, I got to admit, I learned a lot of my, a lot of lessons from sports. You know, I learned a lot about... Um, leadership skills, people skills, and um, just how to work with other people because of the sports that I was a part of. So it's kind of a both and, right? We don't like to have to have sports on, on weekends that conflict with worship, but at the same time, it's a character developing thing. And so faith number one, but, but if you're involved in sports, that's important too. But I want to share a couple lessons that I learned from, from that offsides trap on the soccer team. The first lesson is to play smart, right? Play smart. Because playing harder isn't always better, right? If you can play smart, you can stay in control of the game. and You don't have to run around necessarily like a chicken with your head cut off sometimes. If you play smart. And I also learned that the best teams don't always have all the best athletes. Of course, all good teams have to have good athletes, but sometimes... Good teams win not because there's a bunch of stars on the team, but because they know how to play as a team, right? So Eli, Cody, they might be stars, but I might not be a star. But if we can stay on the same page, we can be a good team. So that's the second lesson. Stay as a team. The team can be better than a bunch of individuals. So first lesson, play smart. The second, we're on the same team. Now, about that first lesson, playing smart, I think this relates to our passage today. So in our passage today, Paul writes something I think is kind of interesting. He says that we should no longer be children in the faith, but we must grow up. It's time to grow up, says Paul. Now, if you're with me, that's kind of interesting because... Some of you might recognize this verse from Matthew 18. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, unless you have faith like a child, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. 
So, one hand, unless you have faith like a child, you never enter the kingdom of heaven. On the other hand, we've got, um, we should no longer be children in the faith, but we should grow up. And I, truthfully, I think both, both are true. Because there's absolutely something beautiful about having faith like a child. But there's also something beautiful about growing into a mature faith as well. Whether you're 8 or 80, I think we can all be growing into a mature faith. You know, there's a joy in making the most out of your childhood years, right? And not growing up too fast. But I found there's another great joy in growing up, giving back, taking responsibility for the faith that's been entrusted to you, and being a team player. Unfortunately, there's lots of stories where people act immature. They don't grow up in the faith, and it's all because of what they believe to be right about faith. We know these stories, right? We know these stories. Unless I get what I want, I'm not going to that church. If it's not how I do it, I'm not going. I kid you not, I have a friend who's at a church right now, and uh, there's a church member been there 60 years, and he's acting up because there's a particular decoration that he wants up in the church lounge, and he's not coming back to church until that decoration is up in the church lounge. And it's causing a fight in the church. And I'm serious. This is a true story happening as we speak. Doesn't sound like growing up in the faith, right? It sounds like an immature thing to fight about, if you ask me. Which brings me back to that first lesson I learned in soccer with the offsides trap, the importance of playing smart, being smart. And when it comes to faith, we can be quick to formulate opinions, get defensive, right? There's a lot of temptation out there to be the one to speak quickly, to have the right answers, to listen later, and then to not think twice before you go ahead and speak your mind. But I think that's immature. If we take time to think smart, to listen, to slow down enough, we can formulate a game plan. We can stay in control of ourselves. So just like in soccer, you don't have to run around the whole time to be the best in the game. If you think smart, you may just be able to, to do well too. The second lesson I want to talk about has, has something to do of course, with being a team player, but I'm curious. And I want you to participate. Have fun with me here for a second. I'm curious today. Our sermon series through this Lent has been life in God's family, right? So I'm, I'm curious about your family. So I'm, I'm curious. Raise your hand if you grew up raised Lutheran. Raise your hand. All right. Hands down. Raise your hand if you grew up Catholic. Raise your hand. Okay. Raise your hand if you grew up in a different denomination. Raise your hand. Okay, raise your hand if you, if you didn't grow up in the church. Raise your hand. Okay. Now, raise your hand if you have only Lutherans in your family. <clears throat> only Lutherans in your family. Now, raise your hand if you have Catholics in your family. Okay, raise your hand if you have people of other denominations in your family. Now, raise your hand if you've got people who aren't going to church in your family. Aha, uh -huh. so our skit, it's clear that this topic kind of hits close to home, right? We are, in, we are in families where we don't always agree, where we don't necessarily see eye to eye. Well, Pastor John told me this. He said, so many of our people have come from different denominations, and some still carry the stigma that some are right while others are wrong. Pastor John and I agree that we want to share a message that makes it loud and clear. We're all worshiping and working for the same God. We're all one in Christ, regardless of denomination or congregation. So how do we play as a team? <laughs> how do we play as a team? It's a nice concept, but you may say, <laughs> Pastor Ben, you don't know my in-laws. <laughs> I'm not playing on that team. I'm not saying that it's easy. But I am saying faith is not a solo sport. 
It's a team sport. When you're on a team, you don't always get your way, but that's not always what matters on a team. The Lutherans may be one player on the team, but we need the other players too, right? And according to this passage, faith is about being united despite our differences. Frankly, that's what we try to embody this very night during these Lenten services. We try to embody being united despite our differences because we're on the same team. Whether you worship at Highlands or downtown, whether you're at church primarily Wednesday nights or on the weekends, whether you're in middle school or in your middle ages, we're on the same team. We're on the same team. But as we leave, here's another challenge. As we leave, let's try to be on the same team as the churches we drive by too. It's Mount Zion, same team. Trinity, same team. Faith Community, same team. St. Pat, same team. Eagle Brook, same team. That's what the community of faith is all about. We may be different players on the team. We may have different positions, if you will, different gift sets, but we're on the same team. Well, back to that old soccer uh, metaphor I was using. So I was on a soccer team. I was a defender, and the guy on my left, the guy on my right, I'm still friends to this day, the guy on my left, he's now at a non-denominational church. He and I have had some good conversations of faith, about faith, don't agree on a lot of stuff, but we definitely are still on the same team. The guy on my right is now a Catholic priest. Good conversations about the faith. Disagreeing some things, agreeing some things, we're on the same team. Non-denominational guy, Lutheran pastor, Catholic priest, defense on the soccer team. Who would have thought? <laughs> and as players on the team, we all do our part, right? We can't just sit on the sidelines and watch. Growing up in this verse in the Bible... Growing up in faith means to get in the game. So some of you may ask, why do we have all these kids helping out with these Lenten meals, serving and everything? Because they're on the team. Are they taking over? No, because you're on the team still too. <laughs> We're all called to bring our A game, no matter what age we are. That's what a grown-up faith is looks like. It's not about having to have all the answers. It's not really even about age. It's about maturity and taking responsibility for the church, playing our part on the team. I got to tell you a couple quick stories. Last week, a student who was in the dish room with me two weeks ago said, hey, I learned how this all works last week. I'd be happy to help this week while people are out on spring break. I know how it works. It wasn't his night to help, but he wanted to help anyway. In the same way, two weeks ago, it was seventh grader's night to serve, but a sixth grader wanted to help. He'd already fulfilled his requirement, already done, but he still wanted to serve. That's what being a team player looks like. That's what a mature faith looks like. A mature faith looks like volunteering for a drama even when you're up to your ears in work, right? You've got a long day, and you've committed to volunteering for a drama, and you don't know how you're going to do it. Volunteer... Faith, or a mature faith looks like congregational life saying, oh, you've got someone else who's doing Italian night? That's okay. We can do American favorites. We can do Sloppy Joes instead. Mature faith looks like volunteering to sing for both services, even after you just spent last week over in France and you're exhausted, still sick, and you're like, don't worry. We still got it, Pastor Ben. We're going to do it. Mature faith looks like two ninth grade students who, after singing as part of this service, said, hey, if you ever need us to do this again, we'd be happy to. Easter, 630, you bet. All four services, whatever you need, we'll be happy to do it. That's what it's about, folks. That's what a mature faith looks like. It means taking responsibility, getting in the game, playing smart, and recognizing that we are on the same team. Let's pray. God, thanks for letting us
be on your team. We don't deserve it, but you call us, and you've got an important job for each of us to do. So help us to understand we don't need to agree all the time, and it's sometimes really difficult to be in a team with people that we don't see eye to eye with. But help us to recognize no matter what, that we're on the same team for the same purpose, and we're here to grow and to continue to mature in the faith that you give to each and every one of us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.